Mike Pacelli here, and for this lesson I'll be talking about the Beatles song, And I Love Her, which was recorded on February 27th, 1964. Um, it was written mostly by Paul McCartney. Uh, Paul had recently moved into Jane Asher's parents' house, and uh, there was a music room in the basement where Paul would go to write songs. There was a piano and such down there. Sometimes John would come over, and actually they'd both write together in the basement uh, home of Jane Asher's parents. Um, it was a love song that, uh, you know, Paul was asked about later who it was for, and, and he very coolly said, you know, nobody. He was married to Linda at the time when he was asked, and he said it wasn't about anybody in particular, which I always thought was very classy because, you know, you should be true to the one you're with. But uh, he hadn't had a, a middle eight, so, um, you know, he just basically had the verse. So when they were in the studio, um, their publisher, Dick James, thought, you know, the, the song needs something extra. It's just the same old verse after verse after verse. So uh, Paul and John went and got a cup of tea, and in 30 minutes they came up with the, the middle eight, which is, uh, you know, really cool and adds a lot to the song, of course. Um, they started recording this on February 25th. They did two takes that day, and initially they were doing it as a band song with Ringo on drums and everybody on electric guitars. Uh, they didn't like how that worked out. They were booked into the studio the next day on, uh, what would it be, February 26th, and they did uh, 16 takes. Again, couldn't get the song correct. Um, somewhere in there they switched to uh, acoustic, and then when they came back the next day on the 27th, they did two takes and they got it right. Uh, and it was the first song they, they did with all acoustic instruments. Um, fun facts to know and tell, I think I've said this before in other lessons, but many times, you know, George and Ringo would hear the song for the very first time in the studio. And George came up with that riff uh, in the studio on, on nylon acoustic guitar. And uh, Paul has said that, you know, the song just wouldn't be as cool without that riff. And he's actually, actually very, very correct. You can, this, this is one of those songs you can really hear who played what, because John is on steel string uh, acoustic and George is on nylon, so there's just no doubt about who played what and how it was done. But uh, uh, to my ear, you know, they did these things live to two track back in 1964, and it sounds like the, the initial recording would be like John on his uh, Gibson J160E and Paul on bass, Paul singing live, and the percussion sounds like it was played live right there, so I'm guessing it was Ringo on bongos and uh, George on claves, because you could hear the overdubs, and you can tell that the overdub is, of course, Paul double-tracking his vocal, and George playing the nylon string guitar, which is uh, obviously uh, a, an overdub. So I think that's how it was probably recorded. Um, and, and again, it was the first song, did I say this? It was the first song that was recorded all acoustic, and, and, and I Love Her has been covered over 300 times. Um, they filmed a version of it, uh, you know, lip-synced it for the Hard Day's Night movie at the, uh, at the Scala Theater in London. That was in, I think, March 31st. And, and I think they only played And I Love Her live one time uh, in the summer uh, on a BBC radio show. That was the only time they ever did it live. Uh, it was first released on United Artists Records, um, I think June 1964. And that had been the first time us folks in America got to hear And I Love Her. So I think that's the backstory, and uh, let's get started. John is playing his uh, trusty Gibson J160E on And I Love Her, and he pretty much uses the same strumming pattern, uh, except there's a couple of these little, you know, John Lennon mute on the upstrokes when he uh, switches chords, which I'll explain in, in a minute. Um, the song is in the key of F sharp. I think you can also write it in E but because uh, that's where it resolves to. Nevertheless, F sharp minor is the first chord. It looks like this. And, and the strumming pattern that he uses is pretty much two quarter notes and um, three eighth notes. So like one, two, three, and four, and, right? Now, whenever the chord holds for two measures, he'll complete that last eighth note of the first measure. So the lick da-da-da, and John, John plays. Um, Right? Now he won't get that last uh, eighth note, but he'll, he'll strum and kind of, as he picks up that F sharp to get to the next chord, which is E6, like this, he'll, he'll play uh, on the second measure would be, and he's kind of coming up, but he's kinda, he kind of mutes and gets to the E6. Easier if I just play it. So, ba-da-da.
Got that? If I do it really slow. Got it? So if there's one measure of a chord, you kind of ghost coming up, but you can continually strum, which he doesn't all the time. I'll do it, I'll write it out perfectly on, on the charts and tabs if you want to know exactly what John did, because this one is very easy to hear precisely what he did. Okay, on the verse, it's F sharp minor to, uh, you need a C sharp minor, like that. And that happens three times. Then he plays this A, first position A. And then John, with those tiny fingers, <laughs> gets his B like this. Very hard for me to do clean because I got these monster hands. But uh, if you have normal size hands, you can get that B chord like that. And then to an E. And a little different on those E's. On this E here, he plays a low note like a. So a, a verse would go like this. Um, ba -da -da. That's a verse. Again, uh, or uh, not again, I, I, didn't, I didn't mention, you know, John usually used uh, roto sound picks back then, mediums, but on this you could tell he's using a lighter pick and the microphone is doing a lot of, a lot of the work because there's so much tone coming out of the guitar. So I'm using a, what am I using? I'm using a Dunlop uh, nylon pick here. And, and, and the, the lighter I play it, the, the more it will sound like the record. Okay, so then the middle eight, uh, let's see, the middle eight is C sharp minor. And then John plays a B up here on the seventh fret bar chord. Back to C sharp minor. Then G sharp minor, like this. Then C sharp minor. G sharp minor. Back up to this B. And then a classic Beatle B7. All right. So, so the bridge. Um, three, four. Then verse three, uh, then same thing. All right, now the key modulates up a half step and they go into a uh, key of G minor. So now you play a G minor here for the where the solo starts, a G minor like this. Do a D minor like this. That happens three times. Then on his B flat, once again he squeezes his fingers together and gets this B flat to a first position C. And then a bar F. So let me do the solo section. And the solo section is exactly like the last verse. So on from G minor it goes. That's that, and then the last verse, and then the ending on the lick out, um, one different chord. Uh, on the very ending when George is playing that riff, um, John plays G minor, ba -da -da, to an F6, like this. Right, and then G minor, and they end, you know, very Baroque-like on a major D chord. So the ending is, ba -da -da,
very, uh, very, very Baroque. And uh, those are John's parts on And I Love Her. George Harrison did an absolutely stellar job on And I Love Her. Um, he was playing a 1963, I believe, uh, Jose Ramirez nylon string uh, acoustic. This is a 1970 uh, Garcia, also made in Spain. Uh, this was given to me by, by my dear friend Phil Kagi back in 1970. Um, it's a 1970 Garcia. Got me through college where I studied classical, you know. digress. Um, but George came up with this fantastic uh, riff for, for And I Love Her, and it's very simple. It goes like this. And it's just E, I'm sorry, B, E, D sharp, C sharp. And he plays that over, over John's chords, so it's uh, one, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three. And then when it starts, I give her, he lays out and he doesn't play, George doesn't play the entire first verse. He just lays out. And he comes in on the second verse, right on, 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 on the first measure of the second verse, and he plays these little, um, these little arpeggios, uh, starting with an F sharp minor, like this. And he's playing, you know, root third fifth, or, or you could think of it like from string three, two, one, two. And so like a F sharp minor form like this to a C sharp minor form like this. Back to F sharp minor. C sharp minor. F sharp minor. Then an A form like this. And a B7. To a E6 form, which is so brilliant. And, and again, that E6 uh, form, you know, over, over uh, a regular E, back then, I mean, 1964, you know, rock pop guys just weren't thinking like that. But George had enough just natural talent to know to make that a, a, like an e, E6 chord. And it adds so much. So just a, just a beautiful little part, you know. Okay, then on the uh, the middle eight, George just um, strums whole notes uh, chords, whole note chords. Like so, he plays the same same C sharp that John plays, like this, and then a B, just strummed for a whole whole measure, back to C sharp minor, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp minor. Then when he goes to this B, the first time he plays just to the second string, and then he plays uh, all six strings. It's a lovely part, just fits perfectly. Then, same lick. And he doesn't play the arpeggio on the first measure. He comes in on the second measure, playing on the uh, C sharp minor. <laughs> so nice, just just so perfect. Then the song modulates to G minor. And George takes that fantastic solo, you know, just, you know, this, he played the same guitar on, on his solo Until I Was You, and that's so tasty. And this one is even simpler, but just, you know, so mature, uh, uh, his note and phrasing. Let me see if I can do it. I can do it justice. Um, mm, let's see. So great. 
great. Uh, I'll write it out perfectly uh, on the charts and tabs if you want to see it perfectly. Plus, I'll, I'll try to do it as good as I can on the performance section. But uh, to note, you know, it's just the way the phrasing is so mature. Like he starts on, um, it's like one, two. And then, you know, he slides into these notes, like he slides onto this uh, F on, um, on B3, but it's, it's, uh, it's just so tasty the way he, he has such reserve, you know. Um, right? And then starts on second beat, one. And he hits the E hard into the D. Now on this time, he plays the melody a little different. He starts on beat two. It's like one. And then on beat two. Right? And then like a uh, uh, like a B flat triad. Now here's George. George's ears are so big on this part, which kind of implies an F six, you know, over the F. You know, this is great. And 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 uh, uh, and then hit that F into it. All right, just just such a wonderful solo. Okay, so. Um, uh, after the solo, da, 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 uh, he comes in. Oh, oh! It it switches keys, and since he's on that G on the first measure of the last verse, um, he waits the measure and comes in on now uh, the same phrase but uh, up a half step, so it's like a D minor now uh, to G minor to, to D minor. And then he, uh, the last one, uh, see, uh, plays just that far because he has to get to the lick. Third time he slides into it. And then he ends. He hits an open D string. Just, just absolutely marvelous, marvelous part. You know, George Harrison was a genius. Okay, again, for fun, I'm going to try to put it all together, and uh, I cannot sing as, as uh, beautifully as Paul McCartney, but, you know, it's fun to do, so just use this as a reference. I give her all my love, that's all I do. If you saw my love, you'd love her too. I love her. She gives me everything and tenderly will kiss my. Stop! 
And that's how to play the guitar parts on And I Love Her. Hope you enjoyed it. Use it for a reference and just play along with me and then you'll be able to do it exactly like the Beatles. And if you would, please subscribe to this channel because you'll get notices when I post new, uh, new videos. And if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. And remember when you play these songs, I always say the same thing, but just have fun doing it because that's what playing the guitar should be all about. I'm Mike Pacelli. Thank you for hanging out with me.